Hello and welcome to the latest episode. This time it's about Cleveland downtown. Um, we'll spend a full day in downtown and I will show you what you can do there. The great thing about downtown Cleveland is that it's really walkable. So actually all the little locations that I've, I've picked are easily reachable by foot. So you won't need a car, but you have many options that you can opt in or out. So it's really up to you what you um, want to do. And of course, you can always call an Uber or um, get in your own car. A final note before we get started. This video really is about downtown. So I will not explain anything about Ohio City or Tremont or any other um, nearby neighborhoods. I'll also not mention the University Circle, which technically belongs to Cleveland, but it's just not part of the downtown core area. So what we will focus on in this episode is actually three major areas. The first part is the harbor area where you will find the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and a beautiful park adjacent to it where you can take photos and videos of the beautiful um, Cleveland skyline um, or just hang out and enjoy a beautiful day there. The second major area will be obviously downtown itself. So the real core where all the restaurants and things are ongoing, um, including the Playhouse Square because it's very close to it. And the third part is called the Flats. The Flats have historically been more an industrial area of Cleveland, but over the past few years they really have developed to the absolute summer location where you can party, have drinks, go to restaurants and just enjoy a great time. Um, you will be right next to the river, so you will have waterfront all along the area and it's a beautiful place to be. So these three areas together will guarantee you a wonderful day in Cleveland and stay tuned for some advice during this video because there are a couple of additional options that I will present along the way when I walk you through the different locations. All right, let's get started. Most of you who will watch this video may not live in downtown, so the first question will be where do you sleep? Um, assuming you're not um, flying in or driving in and out on the same day. Um, I would recommend to check into the Hilton downtown. It's a beautiful hotel. It's um, pretty new and location wise, it is the best bet if you really want to um, discover or experience all the three parts that I mentioned earlier, because it's basically right in the middle of these three locations. If you already know that you want to focus down more on the core area, let's say the restaurants, Playhouse Square, um, East 4th Street, then there are plenty of other options. Um, a pretty cool one might be the um, Hyatt, which is located in a very old traditional building called the Arcade. Um, and another fancy one is the Iconic 9, which is not right next to these locations, but very close by and they have a fantastic rooftop bar and they're just a very upscale hotel. I think some of the professional sports players of the Cleveland sports teams are also living there because it's not only a hotel but also an apartment um, tower. So um, it's just a good place to hang out. In case you check into the Hilton, just make sure you um, go up to the rooftop bar the night you arrive. The views are fantastic. It's beautiful in the summer. They have a half open patio there in the winter. It's all closed, but you still get the fuse. So it's always worth being up there. And then the net very next morning, um, obviously you would probably have breakfast in the hotel. If you don't like to do that, um, one recommendation would be yours truly, which is right in downtown. Your first stop in the morning really should be the rock and roll hall of fame. It's just a great place. It's a, um, not only for rock fans, but just for everybody who has any affiliation to music. It's a wonderful um, place to visit. They have a lot of original exhibits from uh, many famous singers like Michael Jackson, um, Tina Turner, um, also Elvis Presley. It, really everybody you know is, is exhibited in this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And there is a lot of interactive content as well. So it's a lot of fun 
with a family or just for yourself, it doesn't matter, just make sure to visit this place. If you visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you want to at least accommodate about two hours to get through. If you're really into music, you could spend the whole day there. So just make sure you're not too tightly scheduled because there's a lot to see in there. So make sure you plan accordingly. In case you leave the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, faster or earlier than expected, right next to it is the Great Lake Science Center. It's a pretty cool place to um, see some of the original moon landing gear um, as well as some other experimental stuff. It's very good for kids in my opinion, but also adults can have a lot of fun in there. If you plan to visit both places anyway, uh, make sure you buy a combo ticket because you can save some money by doing that. The third attraction right next door is the Cleveland Cliff. It's a huge steamship that you can visit. And again, it can be a combo ticket together with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or the Great Lake Science Center. So um, if you plan that in advance, you can save some money. After you're done with all the museum tours, make sure you um, walk further towards the harbor area. It's also called the Vojinovic Park and it's a beautiful space. You will have to take a photo of the Cleveland sign with the Cleveland um, skyline in the background. Um, everybody's doing it, so you have to do it too. It's just a beautiful um, view on the city of Cleveland. If you are there in the early morning or in the late evenings, you will also see beautiful sunsets or sunrises. And um, just make sure to check that place out. It's really, really nice. If you're still there at around lunchtime, you can also combine it with the Mexican restaurant, which is right in that area called Nuevo. Uh, it's a really nice place, very good food, especially in the summer. You can enjoy the views of Cleveland downtown as well as the harbor. Um, they have a lot of nice outdoor seating available. And if you're early, you shouldn't have any issues to get a spot. So the next thing you might want to do is to walk to downtown. And I would recommend a very specific route here because it's just the most scenic one and it's not really a detour. So you would start from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and walk up along East 9th Street towards Willard Park. Um, just walk through that park. Um, you will come across the Free Stamp and the Cleveland City Hall. And then you just walk along the Lakeside Avenue, um, continue there, and you will enter the next park, which is called Mall C. Once you're in Mall C, make sure to walk up to the railing. Um, you will have a nice view on the Brown Stadium and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where you just came from. But the real cool thing is, if you look down, right in front of you, you will see a little farm with, um, typically there are some goats out there, um, sometimes sheep, chicken. Um, it's a very curious picture because, uh, yeah, you wouldn't expect a farm in the middle of a downtown. So um, make sure to check that out. From Wall C, you will walk across the street. To your right should be the Hilton. Um, to your left will be the Huntington Convention Center. And you just keep walking there. Um, the area is called Mall B. The street you would look for is West Mall Drive. Basically, you can't miss it because Mall B is a huge green space with um, typically a lot of dogs there because it's also a dog park. And at the end of Mall B is the Fountain of Eternal Life. It's also called Memorial Plaza. A lot of cool things to, to check out. In my opinion, the most scenic way that you can take if you walk from the harbor into downtown. As soon as you have crossed the Memorial Plaza or the Fountain of Eternal Life, you take a turn to the right into Rockwell Avenue. From there, you should already see the Terminal Tower, this wonderful historic building. And in front of it is um, Public Square and the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. You can visit that monument, just walk in there. Um, it's also pretty nice to learn a little bit about Cleveland history and just enjoy the beautiful scenery of Public Square. 
Um, typically, all year round, you will have some live music or other events ongoing. So um, it's a little hard to plan for that specifically. But if you are there on a the weekend, um, you will always find something going on there. The terminal tower itself has also some amenities to offer. The area is called Tower City and you can just walk in there and the lower levels are basically a nice little shopping mall so you can um, spend your money there and get some Cleveland Browns gear or something else. What's also pretty cool is that you can just go up to the observatory deck and take pretty cool views of the whole downtown and Cleveland area. So if you have not been on a rooftop yet or your hotel doesn't offer a rooftop, this is your chance for a few bucks to get this kind of view. And I think it's definitely worth it to have at least one chance of a bird's eye view over Cleveland. Once you have left the terminal tower and you're back on the public square, um, turn to the right and enter into Euclid Avenue where you will find some additional shops. It's not a huge shopping area, but you'll find a couple of stores there, particularly the Cleveland store. So if you need some uh, souvenirs, this is a great place to get some stuff. Right on Euclid Avenue is the famous and historical arcade. Please make sure to check that place out. It's beautiful. It opened in 1890. Back then it cost about $900,000. It's one of the first shopping centers in America and um, you will feel the grandness of this place when you walk in there. Fortunately, it's not totally dead. There are still some stores in there, but unfortunately, it's not as busy as it used to be. However, they make kind of a split use. Um, the lower levels are for some smaller shops and then the upper levels are actually hotel rooms from the Hyatt, which is right built into the arcade. When you walk out of the arcade and it's summer and it's hot, please make sure to check out the chocolate bar. It's right next door. Um, they have wonderful um, ice cream and also, I mean, you guessed it, anything sweet, but they also have regular food like um, burgers and uh, sandwiches. And if you don't like that place, there are like 10 places right around there. So you have all the options for a quick break. If you don't want to spend a ton of money during the day and you actually like, like to do more sightseeing, um, maybe even experience some nature, Cleveland has something for you as well. Instead of investing too much time in the shopping centers or Euclid Avenue, you would want to leave the terminal tower and then turn left instead of right and head towards West Superior Avenue just follow on that street until the street splits up into Detroit Avenue and West Superior Avenue, which will be a very, very tiny road to the right side. So before you cross a big bridge, watch out. There is a small track to the right side of that bridge that you walk down and then you're right at the river, the Cuyahoga River. And the park is also called Settlers Landing. So you should be able to find it via Google or Apple Maps. If you really want to spend time outdoors on that day, then just continue on Carter Road and look for the towpath trail, which is at the end of this road. Um, the first indication will be a little fire station. And then from there, you will have a small trail right along the Cuyahoga River. The towpath actually goes down all along to Cincinnati and it's a beautiful bike trail or running trail and it's a very scenic little walk. When you turn around, you will have another beautiful view on Cleveland. So very nice to take some photos from a, I would say a little less common perspective. If you turn around again and continue walking, you will see all the old bridges. You might even see one of those crazy long trains that are hauling um, coal or steel or other stuff. And as soon as this trail um, splits into two directions, one to the left, which is going up the hill, and one to the right, which is also going up a hill, but over a bridge, take the turn to the right, go over the bridge, you will 
again have some really nice view onto Cleveland. You get back to downtown via the Hope Memorial Bridge. Make sure to check out the Guardians who are at the end and the beginning of the bridge. While you are walking over the bridge you will have some fantastic views right over downtown and into the Cuyahoga River and sometimes you can see one of those huge ships getting through there and it's pretty impressive how they do that. Another thing that you always can do obviously is enjoy some sports. All three major stadiums are in walking distance from each other. So you have the Brown Stadium, the Energy Stadium, um, the Rocket Mortgage Field Hall, which is the Cavaliers base basketball stadium, and then also the baseball stadium. It used to be the Indians, but for reasons that are probably well known, they have changed their names to the Guardians. Obviously, um, these events are um, depending on the season and um, you'll have to look that up yourself, but it's always a lot of fun. Um, remember, game day means the town will be pretty busy, so arrive early, make sure you find a good parking spot. Um, event parking can get pretty expensive, up to $50, and you want to make sure you find one of those neat spots that are much less expensive. Another really cool thing is you have the river next by, so you could also head down to the flats, basically the same way that you would take down to the towpath trail, um, but instead turning left, you would turn right, follow the river, and you would get to the flats area, where there is also a ferry. The ferry is free and gets you to the other side of the river, and there you have uh, additional choice of restaurants, but more so you also get rentals for kayaks, paddle boards, and even boats. So if you're into that, make sure to check that area out. It can be a lot of fun, but typically that's a day activity. So you really want to plan for that and don't make this decision in the last minute. When the sun starts to set, finally nightlife is starting in Cleveland and it's a very vibrant city at night. So you have plenty of options. Option number one clearly is for the people who love culture and arts. You please have to check out Playhouse Square, which is the second largest performing arts center in the US, right behind Broadway in New York and Lincoln Center. Obviously you have tons of choices there. There are always some cool shows and plays ongoing. Make sure to check them out. If you elect to go to one of the major musicals or shows there, I highly, highly recommend to plan some additional time for that. One hour before the show starts, there is a so-called Broadway bus with Joe Gary, and this gentleman is an institution of the Cleveland music and art scene. He has saved the theater district, the Playhouse Square district, uh, many, many years ago. He used to be the director there, and he really is so passionate about all that stuff. He's over 80 years old now and still going. And Broadway Bus is his show where he will educate you about the upcoming musical or play and will explain a little bit how it was created, what's behind it. You will learn typically a lot about details that you wouldn't notice otherwise. And it's really highly recommended. Um, it's something unique. You don't have to pay for it, you just have to go to the Upper Allen, ask people, they will know where to guide you. And um, it's a fantastic pre-show before you enjoy one of those grand musicals. Even if you don't go there for a musical, it's very worthwhile to at least walk this area. You'll also find the GE chandelier there. It's a huge, massive chandelier, 20 foot, foot tall and um, beautiful to see. It's hanging across the Main Street, Euclid Avenue. Just check it out. There's so much to see over there and also tons of good restaurants. Another thing you can't miss is East 4th Street. It's also on Euclid Avenue, just a few walking minutes away from Playhouse Square. So you can easily combine it with Playhouse Square and walk from one end to the other within around 10 minutes. East 4th Street is the bar and restaurant scene in Cleveland downtown. It's one street filled with all the cool places that you want to check out. There are cocktail bars, regular restaurants, high-end food, 
low-end food. Really, you can find everything there. It's a very busy street. They have a lot of outdoor dining options as well as indoor dining. So whatever your preference is and whatever the weather allows, it's your choice to have fun over there. A few places I want to mention there are, for example, the House of Blues, where there's always um, some shows ongoing. Uh, on the other side of the street is Corner Alley, which is a super fun sports bar. You can play bowling or just have some great burgers or play a card game. So they have a ton of options there. Right next to that is Pickwick and Frolic. They have a little comedy area down there and uh, also a really cool bar so you want to check that place out if you're into that and if you just want to get some drinks you have two cool bars wonder bar which has an outdoor area and then there's also the society lounge society lounge is a really cool place they have fantastic cocktails and you walk down some stairs it's a really nice place you can hang out there the whole night or just grab a drink and then continue your journey somewhere else. The Cleveland of today wouldn't be Cleveland if I didn't mention the Flats. The Flats is a little outside of the center and the core of downtown, but it's still very walkable from downtown core to the Flats. It's maybe a 15 minute walk. I will show that on the map how you can get there. You will walk along the river, really beautiful. Alternatively, you can also take an Uber or drive with a car. Once you arrived at the flats, there are wonderful restaurants right at the riverfront. Overall, it's always a very busy and vibrant area, so you always have some fun there. And my two favorite places to eat are Lindsay's Lake House and Alley Cat Oyster Bar. They have really good seafood. If you like seafood, these two places are your top choices over there. And if you're not so much into that, there are also some really good bars and restaurants where you can get burgers and some American food. Just recently opened is Chain New Asian. Um, it's a sushi bar. Uh, I've not checked it out myself yet, but it looks really, really good. So I guess if you like sushi, that's another great choice. So it's really your choice. You can have dinner there or you can have dinner somewhere else and just end up there and finish the night and actually also yourself because this is the place to party. There are all the bars and clubs of Cleveland in one small area combined. One of the most famous one is Forward, which is a nightclub and they have a pool area and an outdoor area, which is always pretty popular as you can imagine. So you can have a lot of fun there. Um, another good club is Good Night John Boy or the Inferno Flats. So all these places are great choices if you want to continue the night and party hard. Um, you can't go wrong with any of those. If you come early, which is highly recommended if you want to get a spot in one of the restaurants, typically you can enjoy some live music. The Flats is also another area where you might see one of those huge bit ships coming into the Cuyahoga River or just leaving it. It's so impressive to see that you're sitting right next to it basically. So pretty, pretty impressive. I mean, I, I have a video here that you can see. Um, isn't that cool? I, I mean, I love it. It's amazing. The last option I would like to give you if you want to have a more scheduled out dinner and night event would be a boat trip on the Good Time Free. It will take you back to the harbor where you might have started your day. So what we did and what I would definitely highly recommend is a dinner and night cruise combo ticket. It's five hours on the ship, which sounds, in my opinion, almost too long, but it's so cool. It's actually two trips and the first trip goes out when the sun is still up. You will typically see the sunset though. So it's pretty nice because you get a little bit of daytime Cleveland views and then also some sunset Cleveland views. And during that trip, you have dinner served. It's pretty good. Um, in my opinion, a fair value that you pay for the ticket. And then you come back to the harbor and they will fill up the ship with the night tickets. But because you bought the combo ticket, so you don't have to get off the ship, you just stay on there, enjoy your drinks, and then a few minutes later, the ship goes out again. And this time you get all the night views of Cleveland. So you have to really experience both trips, in my opinion. And you will ship along 
the Cuyahoga River as well. So you will see the flats while everybody is partying. And another great thing is that the night trip gives you some music so people will start to dance and actually then continue your trip somewhere else if you want to. Overall, that's a wrap. I think you have plenty of options that I gave you. Um, pick the ones that you like most or combine them with your own ideas. But I'm sure that's definitely filling a day or even two in your calendar. And I hope you will enjoy it. A few last remarks about Cleveland and Ohio. Wherever you are, you can expect hospitality. Something that everybody in Cleveland and Ohio writes in capital letters. Really, everybody is so friendly. When we moved here from Germany, we made friendships um, almost immediately and people are so nice. So you will, you will love that. You will appreciate that. Hopefully, welcome to Cleveland and Ohio. For all international travelers, it might be also interesting to know that water is always free and you typically get free refills on non-alcoholic beverages, uh, so so-called soft drinks. So don't be surprised by that. It's another thing where hospitality is just a matter of course. Clevelanders overall are pretty proud of their city. It has gone through a rough time, as you might know, and therefore it's even more beautiful to see what's happening in the city, how much it is growing and emerging out of all those hard times. It's getting better every day. And while it's not yet a typical tourist town, I'm sure it will get there with all the great things that are ongoing. So what are your favorite things in downtown? Please let me know. Write some comments, like this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any recommendations or have special wishes for the next videos, what you would like to see, just let me know. And with that, I'm out. I wish you a great day and see you soon to the next episode. Bye bye.